Greetings everyone, Father Hogan here, good to be with you. And today's meditation focuses on the difficulty of being a Christian witness. So, if you haven't done so already, feel free to pause the video to go grab your Bibles. Alright, let us begin. Today's first reading comes from the 11th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is one of my favorite prophets of the Old Testament because he comes at a pivotal time in Israelite history. That's after the destruction of the temple, and he has a very powerful passage in Jeremiah 29, where he speaks about how the Lord has great plans, a future full of hope for each and every one of us, not just for the Israelites, but even now amidst this coronavirus. But being a prophet is also difficult because you put yourself as uh, with a target on your back. And we all know that trying to share our faith can be difficult at times. So before we get into that, I'd like to tell you a testimony or a an experience I had when I was in seminary, I was traveling to Colombia. And we were sent to Colombia to learn Spanish. Our Archbishop had given us permission to do so, and we had been there about eight weeks. We we're going to be there for eight weeks. And I remember near the end of the trip, uh, me being from Colorado, I always mar marveled at uh, mountains uh, in any degree and capacity, that Colombia had some beautiful mountain landscapes that I would like to hike. And so, having spoken to uh, one of the priests in charge of the formation program, we decided to go on a hike. And uh, the Colombian's version of a hike is very different from the American version of a hike. You know, we were going in areas that were obviously very remote, but when we asked them the direction and our plan, they basically said, well, we'll just kind of figure out as we go. And for American mindset, that was very difficult for me to understand, because especially as night was drawing near, we were going into some very difficult land and territory to overcome. We even had to cross a rushing river um, in very, very difficult circumstances. It was very hard for me to trust, and along with a couple of my classmates, who went, put my faith, um, and obviously the priests and those that were there with us to get us back safely. And although that's not the same degree in today's first reading, that you and I were called to trust God because. Jeremiah is a great voice for all prophets, those who are asked to speak the word of God in a godless nation. For Jeremiah says, Yet I, like a trusting lamb, bled to the slaughter. That's quite powerful, because every Christian knows that they take example from their leader, and their leader was crucified on a cross 2,000 years ago. But because of that, we don't despair, but rather we know that by us being a great Christian witness to those in need, we give hope to a darkened world. Again, at the end of our lives, we know that the truth will truly be revealed. As the scriptures say, the truth will set you free. And so it is with that we place our trust in the Lord of hosts, who is the searcher of mind and heart. You know, God seeks out the lost, the alienated, and to bring remedy to them, he doesn't call the strong, the powerful, the affluent. He calls those that quote-unquote mean almost nothing to the world, to shame the world of the wise. And so part of the world in which we live in is about growing in Christian maturity. But life is difficult, it's hard, it's not fair. But God gives us the grace because we're chosen as God's beloved sons and daughters to be the salt of the earth and light of the world. And part of that example is Jesus Christ, who he himself was not really seen in high regard. I mean, let's be honest, he was born in a stable, that his parents were on the verge of divorce before he really started to take off. And having lived 30 years of a quiet life in Nazareth, those 30 years prepared him for a very powerful three years of public ministry, which as he was preaching and teaching that the truth of his word as a witness was difficult for some to hear, especially for the scribes and Pharisees, who sought to do whatever possible to mitigate and silence this dangerous prophet. And so today's gospel can be found in John's gospel, the seventh chapter. And the crowds paint a very honest picture of today's modern world. They were really confused about what we're supposed to think of Jesus. Is he a prophet? Is he the Lord? Is he a good guy? Is he a teacher? And Jesus Christ continues to teach with consistency and faithfulness that he is the Lamb of God the one to take away the sins of the world. For it is through his uh, direction and guidance that we are led to eternal life. And so even though division and chaos ensues, 
hopefully that we are reminded by the fact that God is a God of order. And it brings um, complete uh, unification to the disorder that sin causes in our lives. And yet we're asked to face that each and every day as Christian witnesses. Because those that are powerful want to try to diminish that Christian witness. We see so in today's uh, end of the gospel where the Pharisees and scribes, they say something very interesting and revealing. They say, look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Their intention, despite of the prophetic example that Jesus Christ is giving, that his witness is to be nullified. And if Jesus Christ is to be nullified, so too are many of us in today's modern world. But it's always a call back for us. When the truth is preached, do we hear it? Do we internalize it? Do we, be, do we accept it to be the truth of our lives? And if so, how do we live that truth out? Do we live it in relation that we have a Savior that makes demands on our life? Or we simply see Jesus as a nice guy? May Jesus Christ help us to be truly open to how he's calling us on to greater holiness by being truth seekers, that we can share this truth with the rest of the world. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. God of all faithfulness and love and kindness, we thank you for the ability to be uh, Christian witnesses. We also thank you for our blessings in which you bestow upon us each and every day. We ask us to please use the gifts you've given to us to be the salt of the earth and light of the world. For we make these prayers in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you today and always.